According to an 1894 research report, the earliest ever to create any sort of post office in the American colonies was in 1639 by the Massachusetts General Court when a tavern in Boston owned by Richard Fairbanks was designated to be the first post office. This was in keeping with the European tradition of coffee houses and taverns being mailing centers. The first post messenger may have started in 1672 or 1673 with instructions to behave civilly and mark trees so other travelers would know where they were going. Around that same time, a monthly mail route was set up between New York and Boston. It became known as the Old Boston Post Road, which is still today part of US Route 1. It was two decades later when the King and Queen of England granted Thomas Neal, a man who lived in England and had never been to the colonies, a 21-year grant to establish offices that received and dispatched letters and to set postal rates. This created a centralized postal organization that helped foster a more efficient means of correspondence between colonies and to encourage trade and commerce. In 1707, the British Crown bought out the grant and brought the system under control. By the 1730s, the colony's postal system was pretty well established. Mail carriers from Maine to Georgia, in the South often being slaves, trudged across the rapidly expanding American land to deliver letters, correspondence, and contracts. The position of postmaster had become a posh but important one. They were in charge of the postal rates, the exact routes taken by carriers, and the locations of post offices. In addition, each city had its own postmaster, which carried out many of the same responsibilities as the Postmaster General, but on a regional basis. In 1737, a young 31-year-old publisher, printer, and well-known civic leader was appointed to be the Postmaster of Philadelphia, then one of the most populous cities in the colonies. His name was Benjamin Franklin. For 16 years, Franklin used his influence and power as the city's Postmaster General to increase the circulation of his Pennsylvania Gazette by decreasing newspaper mailing rates. In 1753, when the postmaster died from a long-standing illness, Franklin was promoted to Joint Postmaster General, along with William Hunter from Williamsburg, for all of the colonies. In that position, Franklin helped modernize the post office. His first order of business was to set out on a long tour in order to inspect post offices and survey the routes used. He concluded that more efficient routes needed to be taken, so he oversaw the marking and layout of these new roads. Next, he put in place night service between Philadelphia and New York in order to improve the speed of delivery. Then he installed a standardization system of postal rates based on weight and distance of delivery. He also created a regular schedule for mail by boat from the colonies to the homeland of England. By 1760, and for the first time in over a century of operation, the colony's post office turned a profit for the British crown. However, when the clouds of revolution approached, it became clear where Franklin's allegiances lay and that was, of course, with the colonies. Despite Franklin's considerable and notable work for England, he was dismissed in 1774 as Postmaster General for being a colonial sympathizer. Franklin's career being in charge of mail, it wasn't over, however. Within weeks of the battles of Lexington and Concord setting off the American Revolution, the Second Continental Congress met, and Pennsylvania's representative was Franklin. At the time, William Goddard was running the Constitutional Post, a mail service financed by newspaper subscribers. The main purpose was to disseminate information about the rebellion and to connect Congress to the armies. Because of this, mail carriers had to swear to secure their missives under lock and key in case the British attempted to take them. In July of 1775, citing his experience, Franklin was named the Postmaster General of the Constitutional Post. Since he was in that position when the Declaration of Independence was written, he earns the distinction of being the first Postmaster General in U.S. history. However, he would resign in November of that year to become a delegate to Paris to gain their support for the war. Six years Years later, the Articles of Confederation gave the federal government the right to establish and regulate post offices. Revisions and ordinances continue to add shape to the post office's duties, restrictions, and rules, including one that said that federal government had a monopoly on delivering the mail. The Constitution, officially ratified in June of 1788, gave many of the same powers to the post office that the AOC did. By 1790, a United States population of around 4 million was served by 75 post offices and approximately 2,400 miles of post roads. Two years later, in 1792, America's first president signed the Postal Service Act, creating the modern United States Postal Service. And, well, the rest, as they say, is history. So I really hope you found that video interesting. If you did, please give us a thumbs up below and don't forget to subscribe. We've got brand new videos just like this every day of the week. Looking for something else to watch? We've got other videos from the archives linked to on the screen now. And as always, thank you for watching.